Well, that's why I'm, that's why I'm saying the, the motion was at 30 hours, and that's what. Was there a motion? Well, there's, 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 yeah, you say 30 hours. This couple that was there, they had no documentation. They get 25 minutes a day. Well, you get now a month and a half. Okay. Day. So, so if they get 40, 45 minutes a day, they bring that complaint into the township. The township then has to deem whether it warrants an investigation. You do your investigation, determine there's a violation, and then you have a couple options. One is they can mitigate it by installing the software or the necessary components to reduce the shadow flicker to the acceptable level. The so people can sign a waiver to allow shadow flicker over 30 hours. And in the event that the uh, developer doesn't comply, you sue them as a nuisance violation. Or you cite them with a civil infraction, the penalty for which is $500 per day. That's $182,500 per year. That seems to me to be teeth. Who second? I, I second. I second. Oh, okay. Yes. But that that was a, the caveat leading into the fact that why it's I think it's very important that we have a complaint resolution in place that addresses both flicker and noise and, and the you know that. So that everybody, you know, for their own health, safety, and welfare, knows that if I have a problem, there is something in place, and I have to, I have to write a formal complaint mm -hmm. to the township board. You know, that there is something in place that we address those issues. I think that's paramount that we do that. Well, this couple that that was that she was documentation. They gave me an 800 number to call. And they called and there was no answer on the other end ever. So how do you... Well, they, you gave them a number to, they gave them they gave the number of the wolf to guard the chicken house. That's really what they did. I think, I think what they did... See, that's why we're doing this. Okay? Yeah. Okay, you come to the board, you complain. We call this number, get it corrected. No, you don't call the number. No, no, no. You no, talk no, to no. the board. Our, our, our board our problem, you know, complaint resolution is different than what they held because that, they didn't He went to the board. No, we, no, no, he went to the board and the ordinance had no teeth to allow them to do anything about the board and do about it, which is what they said. They went to the board, the board says they're within the ordinance, the guidance of the ordinance. There was nothing in the ordinance that said that it had there was any regulations on Flickr. That's why the board could do nothing about it. That's what they said. <coughs> At that meeting there in the Maybe they have to give them your number to the board. <laughs> You're on <laughs> With so what did the motion say since I was <laughs> <laughs> I made a motion to allow for 30 hours a year uh, I caught that without part. waiver, but both participants and non-participants yeah. can waive their rights to the 30 hours. Okay, and does well, that address the equipment software? And then the equipment software, like I said, we're going to have to clean this up to, to use that as a, like I said, some kind of a mitigating thing. That once this is established, then you'll have to uh, put that on, on that tower. For participating parcels, there is no limit as it's drafted. And that's because, again, they know what they're getting, they accept the risk, they accept the risk even if it includes excessive noise and shadow flicker. So what I would suggest is that that's 30 hours for non-participating. Unlimited for participating. Unlimited for participating and likely unlimited if a non-participating parcel wants to accept a waiver. Yep. That they can they can accept any shadow flicker above the 30 hour. And then the software becomes a part of the resolution issue if there is a problem. It can, you know, the software the software um, issue presents an interesting one because you've got a violation, you've got a uh, 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 remedy under the enforcement provisions, um, and they have a duty, the developer would have a duty to mitigate that. That is to uh, bring it into compliance immediately. Now, I suppose us specifying what they should or should not use is kind of unnecessary in as much as they have that, um, 
they've got that um, uh, obligation to do it anyway. Yeah. So, you know, and technology may change. So that this technology that you list in the ordinance may be out of date in two years. It's true. And so then what are you going to do? Maybe your ordinance every time. Who's going to monitor whether the technology is <coughs> or whether you have any No. So, you know, in terms of the motion, I think I think we can we can address the remedy part of it under the enforcement and not specify any particular equipment that likely will become obsolete. So we just your strike out the word uh, just a bit. Yes. Um, any thoughts on the on the hours? I mean, does, does everybody comfortable with thirty hours versus anything less than thirty hours? I think it should be less than thirty hours. I don't have any now. Why would I want to put some in? I told you that. I got zero. Yes. There's been a language that, that uh, might get drafted to put some teeth because one of the, the things that was in from the public comment section of the public hearing was that they didn't they wanted to see more teeth in the ordinance and I, we've touched on that already and, <coughs> and uh, um, this the language that is drafted for the gives the procedure in this 
number two, and, and I'll read this for, for, the, uh, for everyone to hear. It said, upon receiving a noise complaint from an affected property owner, the township clerk shall present the complaint to the township board for review at its next meeting, next regular meeting, or a special meeting called for that purpose. If the township board deems a complete sufficient complaint sufficient to warrant an investigation, the township board shall revise the owners and or the operators of the utility scale quest or wig of, of the complaint. Within 10 days of the date of the notice, the owner and or operator of the utility scale west or wig of shall deposit funds in an amount determined by the township board sufficient to pay for an independent sound decibel level conducted by the conducted by a qualified sound professional to determine, determine compliance with the requirements of this ordinance. If the utility scale west or the wig up is in violation of this ordinance, the owners and or operators shall reimburse the township from the deposit required in, in subsection two above for the noise level test and take immediate action to bring the utility scale uh, west or wig up into compliance. In the event that the owners and or operators fail or refuse to bring the utility <coughs> west or wake up in the township may seek any relief at law or equal to abate the nuisance and may also issue a municipal civil infraction citation as provided in chapter 87 of the revised Judicature Act of 1961, being MCL 600.8701, as amended. Each day of non-compliance shall be a separate offense. And if the complaint regarding shadow flicker is deemed sufficient by the Township Board, the Township Board will request, here's the same language again, uh, request the owners and or operators of the utility scale west and Wiggins shall provide a shadow flicker analysis for the turbine as instructed to determine compliance of the requirements of this ordinance. The analysis shall be conducted by an independent third party acceptable to the township. Once again, if the utility Wiggins West or Wigum is in violation of the ordinance shadow flipper requirements. The owners and operators must take immediate action to achieve compliance, which may include without limitation ceasing operation of the structure until violation is corrected or obtain a waiver from the affected landowners. In the event the landowners and or operator fails or refuses to bring the utility scale west or Wigum into compliance, the township may seek a relief at law or equal to abate the nuisance and may also issue a municipal civil infraction citation as provided by chapter 87 of the revised Judicature Act of 1961, being MCL 600.8701 as amended. Each day of non compliance shall be a separate offer. So um, that was the original language. Um, I've consolidated these because they were they were separate they were separate from equal, but I've consolidated them into one um, uh, enforcement process, complaint resolution process, uh, dealing with both noise and shadow flicker. Uh, and how that will be instituted. So the process is the same. That if somebody files a complaint of the clerk, the clerk brings it to the board at the next regular meeting. Um, the board has to determine whether or not the uh, complaint warrants an investigation. If it does, then it has to request a deposit from the developer who shall provide that deposit to the township within 10 days. And then uh, you start uh, your investigation with respect to either uh, sun flicker analysis or a shadow flicker analysis or a uh, sound. Uh